Hello, my name is Greg Andrus. I'm the Vice President of the Democratic Party of Evanston. Uh, this is part of our video interview series with all of the municipal candidates for the upcoming elections. Um, so our endorsement vote is going to begin shortly um, on J January 17th. Uh, the ballots will go out to all of our members. They're due back in on January 23rd. Uh, if you're not a member yet, uh, you can sign up to become one on our website. That's evanstondems.com. Um, you can either become a uh, dues paying member or you can get your membership by volunteering. And if you're interested in that, uh, just reach out to us. We have a couple of, uh, of events coming up that you can volunteer for to get your membership that way. So I'm here today with Eduardo Gomez, who is running for the uh, city clerk position. Um, and uh, Eduardo, Eduardo, why don't we, uh, why don't you start off and tell us a little bit about yourself for the first few minutes here. Yes, thank you so much to you and thank you so much for the Democratic Party of Evanston for allowing me to be here today to speak in front of you all. My name is Eduardo Gomez and I am running as a writing candidate for the Office of City Clerk. Uh, you know, I'm from Evanston. I was born here. I have connections to this community because my family lives and works here in the city. And I decided to run for office because, you know, as a son of immigrant parents uh, growing up, I, I knew firsthand just how much important it was that we made sure that we had resources and services available to everyone. And, you know, it's important that, you know, people are not felt marginalized or left out of the community in which uh, they, they live. You know, currently I've had the pleasure of assisting my city and become and being the deputy city clerk for the last three and a half years. Um, and, you know, I decided to uh, launch my candidacy because, you know, if given the opportunity to become the next city clerk, I would like to bring focus back to the uh, accesses to resources and services. I want to continue to push for transparency with our government. And I want to increase uh, civic engagement in our community with our residents. Well, thank you so much. Um, so the, the first question, and it's um, not really as much of a question, but um, the city clerk is different from a lot of the other elected races, uh, elected positions that are, that are on the ballot this year. Um, so I just wanted to, to start off by, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you see that position um, and and what your uh, what your priorities are going to be in that role, and uh, I know you you touched on that a, a little bit in your opening, but um, yeah, just um, for people who aren't as familiar with what the city clerk uh, does and and how it's different from say the aldermanic roles. Yeah, so I see the role of the city clerk as being the hub of information for our organization of the city and acting as a liaison between residents and the the city. Uh, if, you know, moving forward, you know, my priorities would be to provide access to resources and services to everyone, but, you know, focused on, uh, make sure that we uh, include our underserved communities. I, I want to, again, advocate for more transparency uh, for, from our local government, and I want to, again, increase uh, civic engagement from our residents. And so, to me, you know, to, to start off with, in regards to resources and services, you know, I want to first focus on bringing back some of the services that we used to offer in that office, that being uh, passport services and real estate transfer stamps. Uh, you know, those are services that our residents have come to expect from us. And I want to bring those back so that way we can continue to serve our community. You know, I also want to implement uh, language access services from our office. Um, to start off, that would look like, um, you know, cre um, taking the information that the city provides and producing it in Spanish. So that way, those that may face a language barrier can still participate and know about what is happening in their community. Um, you know, in regards to transparency, I want to make sure that people know about the FOIA process and how that is and what that is and how they can request public uh, records. And then, you know, increasing civic engagement, that's gonna come in the form of partnering up with some of the organizations here in our community, such as the Evanston Public Library or the League of Women Voters. You know, I want to have uh, voter registration drives in which we have residents who aren't registered to vote 
have the opportunity to sign up to vote, um, I'm sorry, to register to vote, and at the same time, inform them about why it is important that they participate in elections and their democracy. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so the clerk's role as a FOIA officer um, is something that's gotten uh, fairly contentious um, in the last few years. Uh, there, it's been the subject of a lot of city council meetings um, and, uh, and has made the news lately. Um, so how would you plan to smooth over uh, that relationship, you know, make that, make that relationship with city council less uh, of a fractious one while still providing the kind of accountability and transparency that the city clerk's office is responsible for? Yeah, I think that comes down to two, two things, and that is relationships and experience, okay, right? So in regards to relationships, you know, in my capacity uh, as deputy city clerk, I have worked over the years to, to cultivate a collaborative relationship with city staff and members of the city council. And then secondly, my experience, you know, currently in my capacity, I have overseen the FOIA process and making sure that, you know, our city is compliant with FOIA and the state statute and FOIA laws. Um, so on the subject of FOIAs, uh, one recent change I wanted, I wanted to bring up was with police FOIAs, which, um, uh, is that something you'd like to see returned to the clerk's office? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would, you know, I think that for the sake of transparency and for the sake of accountability, I think it's in the best interest that that responsibility fall under the jurisdiction of an independent nonpartisan office whose only objective is to, again, uphold the values of transparency and accountability. You know, I believe that if the city wants to regain some of that trust the public feels it's lost. I think this would be the step in the right direction. Uh, you know, I also don't want to be the sole person in charge. I want this to be a collaborative effort. You know, I want this to be a collaborative effort between my uh, office and other departments to ensure that we are properly complying with FOIA law. Uh, thank you. Um, so the, the clerk's office is more of an administrative role than a, a legislative or a policy making role, um, uh, which is to say that, you know, there's the, the, the duties of the office are quite uh, restrictive as far as what you're allowed to do and, and what you're allowed to change. Um, what would you say is one of your biggest priorities for making a change within the office? Yeah, um, for me, one of the biggest priorities is going to come down to, again, services. And that includes the services that were once held within that office, that being, you know, passports and real estate uh, transfer stamps. Um, I want to make sure that we bring those into the office once again, because once they were removed, um, you know, many of our, our community members voiced their concerns over that because they were accustomed to coming into the clerk's office and seeking those services. So I wanna make sure we bring those back because these are the type of services that our residents deserve from our office. Um, one of the other duties of the, of the clerk's office, um, and this is in conjunction with the Cook County clerk's office, is to uh, help run elections here in Evanston. Um, so I wanted to, to hear what plans you might have to make elections more accessible to Evanston residents. I know you had mentioned registration drives. Um, I, is there anything you'd like to expand on that? Yeah, so like you mentioned, registration drives, partnering up with organizations, registering people to vote, um, you know, because we want to make sure that we are not disenfranchising anybody in our community, you know, and that also uh, includes us putting out information out there so people are aware of any upcoming elections. You know, one thing I also want to do is uh, sit down and have a discussion with the city manager's office to see if there's a way we can better facilitate the early voting site, just because I want to make sure we have a, a large enough space to accommodate the many residents that come out during early voting to participate. Um, you know, and one example of that could be the Robert Crown Center. You know, they have ample space in there. And I think it's not uh, unreasonable to assume that we could accommodate early voting for two weeks in that facility. Uh, thank you. 
Um, and while we're on the subject of elections, um, and I, I bring this up just because it's a, a little unique to this election, um, there are six or seven candidates now running for this, this seat, um, but only one is on the ballot. Um, you, so your own race is as, is as a write-in candidate. Is ballot access something that you think the city clerk, uh, the clerk's office can help people with in the future? Yes, I, I do believe so because, you know, one of the responsibilities of the clerk is being the elections officer for the city. And again, that comes back to our commitment of putting out information that's accessible to our residents to make sure they know um, what to expect uh, you know, when it comes to accessing ballots, whether it's in person or you know, as mail-ins. I think the more information we put out there, the better informed our residents will be. Uh, thank you. Um, so while we're on the, the subject of elections as well, um, it seems like every, every election cycle, um, there's always races that end up going to court um, for what, you know, to, to everyday people might seem like the littlest of things. Um, people, you know, going to court over staples or stamps or, or binding. Um, what do you think the clerk's office can do to streamline that process for first time candidates? Well, again, because, you know, our office is the hub of information for the city. Uh, uh, again, it all goes back to providing those the um, information that's um, important in, in terms for people running for office. And that includes putting out information that is given by the Cook County Clerk's Office or the State Board of Election that could include candidates guide, you know, that walks them through the process of what to expect if they are first time candidates seeking office. Uh, thank you. Um, so the, this next question is one that I've been asking um, every non-incumbent candidate. Um, why, why the clerk's role? So of all of the different races on the ballot this cycle, um, of all the ways that you can you know, step in and, and pitch your hat into the ring uh, for, for public service, why run for city clerk? Yeah, well, you know, I, I love Evanston. I love the city of Evanston. I love working here. I like living here. Um, you know, currently uh, as in my capacity as deputy city clerk, I see the potential of services that we could be providing to the public and I want to make sure that, you know, our residents are better served and have access to all the services that they've come to expect from our office. And then, you know, it goes back to the, the thing I mentioned earlier, being, you know, a, a son of immigrant parents. You know, growing up, uh, I, I, I know firsthand um, what it's like to not being able to have access to resources and services because of language barriers. So I want to prevent that from anyone ever experiencing if they come to our office. Um, before I get to, to the, the next few questions here, I just wanted to remind people, anybody who's um, participating as a spectator, if you have questions, just send them to me in the Zoom chat and I will, uh, I'll ask them at the end because we're not gonna be unmuting anybody anymore. Um, so uh, you're gonna, if you, if you win the, the election, um, you'll be succeeding um, our current city, our current um, city clerk, uh, Devon Reed. What would you say is one decision um, that he made that you like and one decision that he made that you, you don't like or something that you'd like to see um, improved? Yeah, so one thing that I you know, like and admire about the clerk is his commitment to transparency. You know, he advocated for more transparency in our community and because of that, you know, now a lot of more people know about the FOIA process. So that's something, you know, I, I appreciate of him and want to continue. And then something that we could, uh, again, improve is services. And, you know, that starts by bringing back some of those that we used to have in that office. So I would like to see that come back. Um. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, so I, I just wanted to, we're gonna pause here for a minute. Um, so if anybody in the chat has, has questions, um, uh, they, can, they can send that over to me now. Um, there's also, a, there's a question I, I like to ask the incumbents and though you're not an incumbent, um, being the deputy city, city um, clerk, um, I, I just wanted to ask, when you first stepped into the role as deputy city clerk, what, would, what was your number one priority 
Um, and is that something that you think you've achieved? Um, well, I think uh, being, again, the hub of information for people, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that people uh, knew what was happening in their you know, city, how to access information. And I, I think I've done a pretty good job of that because anytime someone would step into the office, I would be able to um, um, gear them in the right direction if there was something that wasn't held in our office, but I knew where to point them in order to get that information. So I think I've done a good job in that sense, and I want to continue to do that as the next city clerk. Uh, thank you. Uh, we did get one question from uh, from one of our audience members um, who uh, who asks, and this is uh, in reference to something that happened in, uh, it looks like late 2017, um, in your capacity as deputy city, uh, city clerk, you had approached the city council with an offer to translate minutes, um, which um, is something that apparently uh, did not happen. Um, is that is that something you wanted to to address? Um, the are you referring to the city council minutes? Uh, yes. Yeah, um, that's something that I you know brought up, but it wasn't ultimately my decision. I, I just brought it up um, as a an op a window of opportunity to bridge that gap, that language gap that some of our residents face here. Um, it was never pursued because I, 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 in my capacity, don't have the authority to make those decisions. I can just recommend. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, I just want to remind everybody that if you're not a member of the Democratic Party of Evanston yet, um, you can sign up on our website, um, evanstondems.com. You can become either a, a dues-paying member or a member uh, by volunteering. Um, and if you're interested in that, we have some, some opportunities coming up. And uh, the ballots for our endorsement session will go out on January 17th, and uh, they're due back on January 23rd. So uh, thank you so much, Eduardo, for joining us for this, uh, for this discussion. Yeah, um, thank you, and thanks to the Democratic Party of Evanston um, for hosting this event. Um, you know, I just want to say, in closing, you know, I got into this race because I want to make sure we provide good services and access to information and you know i am looking forward to re hopefully receiving your support and your endorsement and thank you so much for this opportunity uh, you're, you're very welcome and have a have a great afternoon have a great evening everyone stay safe